Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We are on part three and we're talking to Stephanie James about her book, The Spark, Igniting Your Best Life. And um, please hold up your book. Uh, this, is, this is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking, we were talking about um, some spark-filled moments in your life in part one. In part two, you're um, talking about some of the techniques that you talk about in your book and some of the experiences of your own personal mission about finding the love within you and shining it out and, and how you got there. And um, now I want to talk about, you know, now you're reinventing yourself and finding your voice, because as you're going through this whole transforma transformation, there's this kind of integration piece where the old you and the new you are merging together, and you're trying to figure out how you express yourself in the world. Can you tell me a little bit about that process for you? Yeah, So, and, and this is such an interesting topic because literally just last night, I have an online group which is an yeah. igniting your best life group. Yes. And this is the chapter we were talking about. Oh, good. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, this is so apropos. And, and how do we reinvent ourselves? You know, and, and, and the important piece of, yeah, finding our voice. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, what happens is so much through life transitions. You know, it might be a lot of clients I've dealt with, you know, they're just getting out of a divorce or maybe they're just getting into a marriage or they lost their job or they got out of grad school and can't find a job or they've retired. So these transitions, oftentimes people start losing a sense of who am I without this role or who am I, you know, without this thing that I've identified myself with for so long. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think the cool thing, if we can reframe this a little bit, is like, I, I used to also have this, this plaque that was in my house that said, it's never too late for happily ever after. Mm. And, and that's really what this is about. It's like, we, the, the point of power is in the present moment. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's never too late to reinvent ourselves or to, sometimes it's inventing ourselves for the first time. Mm -hmm. And some of the ways truly that I help people to start doing that is people don't even realize, like I've, I've had people come and say, I don't know how to do this. I don't even know what I like anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, you know, what I, you know, am passionate about anything like that. So I think it can be as, as easy to begin with, like kind of just the entry point, the entry point can be writing down a list of the things that bring you pleasure. Mm -hmm. and pulling in all of your senses. Mm -hmm. So it might be, you know, and, and these can be simple things, but I think it's, it helps tune in your brain to what do I like? Yeah. How do I feel about this specific thing? So like literally for me in, in my morning, it's the simplest of things, but I love it. I love waking up, snuggling and pushing one snooze with with my partner <laughs> and then he and I get up and then I'll I'll just hug on to our big standard poodle we have this wonderful pool poodle jewels and I'll just hug on her and then go into the living room and one of the things that brings me pleasure every day is we have this big picture window and as I open up the drapes it doesn't matter if it's a cloudy day it doesn't matter if it's snowing it floods the house with light hmm. And it's those things that we start realizing. It's those little things. It's our little ritual, mm -hmm. you know, of going and grinding the coffee in the morning. I love the smell of fresh ground coffee. And I love just the whole ritual around putting it in the grinder and putting it in the little coffee maker or the French press and, and then doing yoga or mindfulness in the morning. It's those little things that start going, okay, these are what are important to me. Mm -hmm. so those again, so it might sound like, oh, those pleasures, that sounds like pretty simplistic. Again, it really is an entry point. Right. Realize. It's your gateway drug to actually finding out more and more because well, yeah. what I find with clients is that they oftentimes, like you said, and then it can be really, really young. I've worked with people who are in college who like, I don't even know what brings me joy because my whole life has been programmed up until this point. And mm -hmm. so you lose touch with your heart and what brings you joy because someone has been telling you what you have to do all the time. And it, it starts with little baby steps, like you said, like the coffee and opening and because you start going, oh, okay, that's what it feels like when I'm happy because people lose the 
five sensory experience of what it even means to be happy. So if you kind of let the light in and start mm -hmm. feeling what it feels like to be happy, it's the gateway, like you're saying, to something grander. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think we can expand it from there. I mean, there, there's several exercises that, that we can do that help us start to define who we are. And like what I did with the group last night was this wonderful thing where you go back to wh where you were. I lead them in this like guided visualization and they go back and they look at these different times throughout their lives, their childhood, mm. kind of, you know, high school, high school, college age, and then maybe in their 20s. And if you're just 20, you know, you can just do these first you know, few areas right. of your life. But it's looking back and noticing, number one, what were the things that you wanted to be when you grew up? Mm. And the reason those things were important to you, because usually there's qualities in there that are really important to us that we already have, or we want to embrace or develop more fully. Mm -hmm. And then also going back and then going back to those same timeframes and looking at in those places, where was I in flow? Where was mm -hmm. I in like this natural state of being where people were either saying to me, wow, you're just a natural at that. Mm -hmm. or I had the experience of like just time, you know, the timelessness, because this was something, whether it was sports or music, or for me, it was, believe it or not, talking, you know, it was, <laughs> <laughs> I loved speech class. I loved, you know, being on stage and singing and dancing and all the things mm -hmm. I did growing up that, that gave me that sense. Mm -hmm. And so it's stepping into, and oftentimes, again, you know, we've gotten these programs of, what it's okay to do and be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in our life. And, and what so gave you the courage? Them. Yeah. How did, what gave you the courage to step up and actually be the singer, the talker, the guest, you know, the radio host? Well, what, what did it now presently or what did it then? Um, now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think so interesting that you say that because it really goes along with um, that exercise from last night because mm -hmm. When I went, so this has been, it was three years ago in February that I did my first show on podcasts on radio. Mm -hmm. And as I'm walking into the studio, I was really feeling nervous, mm -hmm. you know? And what hits me as I'm just about to the door is, what are you, what are you nervous about? You're a natural at this. Mm -hmm. You've been interviewing your brother. I interviewed my brother as a kid in the bathtub together. You know, when I was like five years old, you know, and, and I was always doing it like through a hairbrush and we'd put oh, on little funny. plays and, oh my gosh, that's you great. know, so th there was a part of me that I just tapped back into. Mm. And if I just let go of this consciousness around, is this right or wrong? You know, it's getting out of our own way. Mm -hmm. And that's how we can become these clearer conduits. Mm -hmm. And those are the moments, you know, CJ, and I imagine you have them too. It's like, it's, it almost feels divine. It's like, mm -hmm. it's not me, Stephanie James, a personality. It's coming through me. Right. So there are times when I don't even remember. I did a whole two and a half hour presentation and I don't even remember. If someone said, what did you, what did you say? I'm like, I roughly had notes before I came in and I have no idea. And then people will repeat, well, when you said X, Y, Z, I'm like, I'm like, what did I say? Because I know that's not even <laughs> yeah, coming for that. me. Yeah. yeah, I've had that experience for sure. Yeah, yeah, so it's actually getting out of your way so that your voice can be heard. The only thing I would also say, sometimes it's not even your voice. Sometimes your voice is your silence, which I'm noticing with a lot of women. And sometimes they're not talkers. They're just the people who listen and who integrate and who just like absorb everything and then bring forth something new that comes from that ab absorbing of, of everything. Um, it, it's interesting because I've talked to a lot of introverts lately. I'm an extrovert, so I'm yeah. you know out there talking all the time. Um, but I've noticed there's a different kind of putting yourself out there, which is listening and deeply listening and that's who you are and it's doesn't have to be a voice that's been heard but it's like listening digesting and then offering that of which you are um which may even be just listening and not saying a word beyond that and doing 
you know, whatever you think based on what you heard. It's, it's a very interesting thing in this world that is all about engagement and collaboration and now becoming like a met job metric on what you get paid on, whether you're a collaborator or not. It's a very interesting thing that has emerged, I think. Well, and I'm so glad that you brought that up because I think that that's really an important distinction. And when we're saying, you know, when you find your own voice, that doesn't mean that you're finding your voice so that you're spewing something on other people or that you're always speaking up. Finding your own voice, I mean, that is your internal voice. And so whether you speak it or whether it's where you're, you know, in silence and hearing and listening mm -hmm. to that still voice that we don't access when we're distracting ourselves and keeping ourselves busy. I think that's that's the essence of this. And so reinventing yourself, it, it's about finding out the things you truly love to do and then getting in touch with that voice so that you can shine in the world however you want to. It doesn't, the way you shine is not gonna be the way I shine or you know anyone else. We each have our own individual light that we've come here at this specific time, you know, in, in the place that we're at to shine. Yeah. And, you know, that's why I think one of my biggest messages to people is your healing matters. Right. And when you do your own work, that's what you're doing. You're allowing for your own unique light to shine through. And it's hard because I think we're in a society where we think, oh, I want to be the next Stephanie or, you know, or Oprah or whomever being out there and being a politician. It doesn't have to to look that way because that's what we are societally conditioned to look at like have your voice out there you know but it it could be um i as you were saying that i was thinking about this wonderful npr episode and it was just so beautiful it was this woman who had been collecting acorns and she um have you heard this art this no, okay so no. she was collecting acorns and she had them in a gigantic basket and then she would replant these acorns that would turn into trees and there was like this whole grove of trees that she'd been planting throughout her whole life wow. and that was her purpose like no one no one knew that the trees were there no one like someone somehow someone captured after she had died that she'd been doing this and she'd been quietly going and planting this beautiful grove of trees and i had talked to um, paul selig and there's this woman who was a bus driver and he said that every day she'd walk in and she'd like say like a warm just like you and you're when, when you're in preschool like she was so bright and happy that when the kids got on the bus and she's like hello good to see you like the kids really felt it and that was her purpose because probably for some of those kids they never got that at all from their parents or whomever in their life so they she was the caring adult that was in their life as a bus driver. So there's all these different oh, ways where it wasn't her, literally her voice coming, but it was just her being and being in that space that uh, those are the stories that I, I wish I could do more of those kind of stories, but those people are so much in the shadows. I can't, I can never find them. Right. I just have to hear secondhand right. stories about them, but I love those stories because they show us the power of just embracing who you are, not necessarily what society says you should be. Um, but I love that idea. Any other thoughts before we close on um, igniting your best life? I, I feel like, um, gosh, this has just been awesome. Just a wonderful time to share all this. And I, and I guess I would just you know, encourage people to continue doing their own work like we've been talking about it's like each one of us as we do that work it's like the challenges the difficulties we face can become a match point that ignites something within us and that can become our gift that we share with the world love it so we've been talking to stephanie james about her book 